Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. Tonight, Trevor Bauer gets a chance to see just what kind of an ace he can be after winning the last two games against the Minnesota Twins. The Indians uh, and the Bauer have a chance to save their season. They could cut the uh, Twins' lead to eight and a half games. Otherwise, it'll be ten and a half, which is a daunting number for the rest of the season. You'll recall that Bauer's temper tantrum in his last outing uh, upset some of the Indians players. Well, tonight will be his biggest game in a long time. Hopefully he's up to the task, especially with the Yankees coming to town for four games this weekend. Jeff Shudell is here. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a uh, Thursday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 23rd consecutive year and as always seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. Jeff Shudell of the News Herald is with us, busiest man in the media covering the Indians, the Cavaliers, and uh, of course, the uh, who else are you covering? Oh, yeah, the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, thanks for having me, Les. Yeah, it, great, great. it was a good day out there at Minicam today. All right, tell me about it. Yeah, you got a nice tan. Yeah. Um, I like this time of year. I like to be outside. Um, I like what I saw from the Browns in, on these three days. All right, days. tell me what you saw. The, um, I think the chemistry has to still develop a little bit between Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham. A lot of that's because Beckham was not here for right. OTAs, but I'm confident that will come. Um, I really liked what I saw from Greedy Williams, the rookie, and I think we're going to see some really good training camp battles between Denzel Ward, the cornerback rookie last year, right. and Odell Beckham. Oh, okay. Well, that'll be interesting. What Besides Beckham, which is the obvious big story, uh, and also how much uh, Baker Mayfield has improved in the offseason, what else is out there that uh, you were looking for or found? Well, I'm still intrigued by what happens at, at right guard. Um, Will Austin Corbett really sees that job when the pads go on. I think that's one of the most in interesting parts of this. Didn't we of, think of they were going to kind of hand him the job? I'm not sure. I don't think he really thinks that. And um, But I'm not sure how stiff that competition is. And plus, I want to see Greg Robinson. Now, he'll have the whole training camp at left tackle. Right. How good will he be? It's interesting to me that Desmond Harrison who started last year, played the first eight games, he showed up a little late to minicamp, and they, and they cut him. Well, okay, he showed up late, he, mi he missed connections with his plane, but it, it, that can't be the only reason. Right, right. And, uh, I would hope that's not the only reason. I, yeah, I would hope not. I mean, that, that would be kind of overreacting, right. maybe. But, um, Unless you're sending a message. Yes, and, but is, if he's that good, do you really send a message with somebody who... Find somebody you, else. You thought... Could, could be, uh, well, they're, they're saying, well, Joe Thomas isn't coming back. Let's throw Desmond Harrison out there. Oh, that didn't work too well. So right. uh, he pro they probably determined he's not going to get much better than he was. You know, the great uh, basketball coach, Al McGuire, used to talk about never um, always have rules about reporting to a, at a certain place at a certain time, catching a bus or whatever. And everybody said, well, he's a tough guy. Well, what used to happen with Al is he waited till he had one of his student assistants uh, standing away from the bus, counting heads, waiting till everybody got on. And then when he did, he went to McGuire and said, everybody's here all on time. Oh, good. Yeah. Smart. That's how he got that, kept his job. Exactly. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can email us during the show at uh, reallesslevine at gmail.com. Jeff Shudell of the News, uh, News Herald is with us. All right, tell me what's the latest on uh, Duke Johnson, who continued to flap his mouth at least yes up until yesterday. Well, we're going to see. I, I think that's really an another in interesting dynamic. How is this handled by Duke Johnson and the coaches? The fact is that uh, Kareem Hunt is going to miss the first eight games sure. of the season. So you cannot go in, you can't trade Duke Johnson for a fifth round pick probably. 
and, and going into the season with Nick Chubb and Dontrell Hilliard right. as your running backs. So, so you could get a fifth or sixth round pick, but you also may need him as, number, well, right now, number two running back, but if there's an injury to Nick Chubb, maybe number one. Right, and, um, and I was listening to uh, you and Andy the other day and um, the debate on what, why is Duke Johnson upset? Is he upset because um, he wants more money down the road right. or are his feelings truly hurt? I believe that he feels um, betrayed because he believes the Browns tried to start trading him around March 1st. And does, does, is he aware that almost every player is on the trading block, including Joe Thomas? Right. And um, I don't know if he's aware of that, but that's a really good point. I mean, you're right. They, Joe Thomas's name came up. Well, yeah, if, if the Browns are willing to trade Joe Thomas, Duke Johnson shouldn't feel betrayed that the Browns might want, and big deal. So, hey, you know, if the Browns are saying, if we get a first or second round pick, which you're not going to, right. but that, if someone's gonna give us that for, different story. for uh, Duke Johnson, sure you make it. But if all you're gonna get is a fifth or a sixth back in, in March, you say, no, we're not gonna do that. I don't know if you heard me with Andy yesterday. I said that mm -hmm. we, got a, we got a press release from the Browns that. Duke Johnson is uh, out eight to 12 weeks with hurt feelings. Yes, I, yeah, I get my days confused uh, this time of year, but yes, right. that's what it was. Did you yeah. laugh? Yes, I did. I was, I was driving and laughing, so yeah, so that was a good I one. did my job then. Yeah, yes. 216-575-0403. All right, I'll throw two names at you, a first name and a second name, Odell Beckham. Uh, excuse me, three names, Odell Beckham Jr. You know what, Les, I was very impressed by him when we spoke to him yesterday. I thought he really handled the uh, media session well, and he looked like he meant what he was saying to me anyway when he said that all he's really interested in is winning uh, games and winning championships. He's got his, con he, unlike uh, the debate about Duke Johnson, he's already got a $90 million contract right. that he's working on. Um, so there's no hurt feelings there? No hurt feelings, no. No, and uh, if you could buy an orange Rolls Royce. Like <laughs> Did he, you see it, by the way? I didn't see it. I've seen the pictures of right. it. You and, didn't see uh, it in real life? No. Um, I would have stood out. <laughs> you can get behind, beep, beep, move it. <laughs> but um, he, he doesn't uh, want to be recognized when he's driving no, around. Right? No, no. He, he wants to blend in everything he does, right? The, right? the blonde hair, his gold cleats, or his other shoes that have OBJ right. on his side. I, let's I, let's I, project five months down the road. Are you going to be tired of him or are you going to be not, you can't wait to, to talk to him uh, on a weekly basis? Which that, one do you think it'll be uh, or will it be somewhere in between? Probably somewhere in between. I, I think if we only, I can imagine we only get him one day a week. Right. And that might end up being enough. Um, if, he's, if he is a true team player, then of course we'll get him, we'll get him after games. Right. And I think as long as he doesn't create any commotion uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to be around. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun watching some catches he made. Did you get any? Did you see any examples of it? Well, the one we catches? actually had a really nice one uh, in our paper today. Our, our photographer Tim Phillips got, and he's jumping up, and it was one of those deals where his, his arms, his hands are out here, right. and uh, I'll tell you what, man, he he is. Well, I uh, think it's probably too easy for him to catch regular passes or the regular way, so he probably think, figures you get more points if you do it fancy. And, yeah, and, and he and on one side, uh, Jarvis Landry, who could they had one-handed uh, catch contests when they were at LSU. Um, uh, Landry was telling us, and uh, they're going to be fun. I mean, and if the Browns run the ball like they should be able to, I think fans are going to have a lot of fun, and they're on prime time a lot. And I, I think it'll be that deserved. Freddie Kitchens is also. He's got this little secret that he's got, of all the new coaches in the last two years, he has the most talent on his team, I, I, I would think. And I think he has this little secret that he knows how good they're going to be. He doesn't want to tell you. He wants to warn the players, don't, don't be too uh, cocky about this whole thing. But I think he th expects nothing but the best. Well, I think you're right, Les. And, and let's, look, let's talk about that. Um, you're, you're right when you say he's taken over the best situation. First off, he is the only coach... Um, that's taken over a team with a maybe maybe you could go back to Bill Belichick with 
Bernie Kosar, but he's the only coach who's taken over a team with an established starting quarterback, right? Out of the other 13, 13 14 the, the, teams? They've been here um, since 1999 anyway. Oh, oh from the Browns. You're talking yeah. about the Browns. Right, okay. right, right. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, the Browns. Okay. I should have clarified. So he's the only one who's taken over a, a Browns Correct. team with an established quarterback. Plus, the other guys were taking over teams that won three games. Sure. You know, four. Well, he's talking about Bud Carson and leaving it to Belichick and uh, – there's no, yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. Then, of course, the expansion team coming in in 99. Right. And there's right. no quarterback since then. Right. And, and, uh, and it, Freddie Kitchens has taken over a 7 8 and 1 team. Right. So, um, and then with a good established general manager. So That's um, also true. So he really is stepping into a much better situation than Mangini, Shermer, Patton, any of those guys. G- give me about a half a minute of what else. Just throw out a name and we'll talk about it. What else impressed you in, uh, during the uh, mini camp? Well, I think uh, we're going to see a lot of two linebacker sets with Joe Schobert and, and Christian Kirksey. And I'll tell you what, that defensive line, I think, is going to be very, very good. Uh, Freddie Kitchen said he thinks that's the strength of the team with Miles Garrett and Olivier Vernon on, end, on the ends and then Larry Ogunjobi and uh, right. Sheldon Richardson. And not too tackle. upset about not being able to add the the biggest fish in the sea there, right? McCoy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, would have been nice. It would have been nice to have Gerald McCoy here, but um, I, I think I think they'll be okay without him. And if he wasn't all in as as uh, Freddie Kitchen yeah, said, then, then you don't want him. Jeff Shudell is here. We'll get to your phone calls. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call if you want to talk to uh, Jeff. Freddie Kitchens will wrap up uh, the Browns minicamp when we get back. I want to talk about Scott Longard. He's a baseball aficionado, and uh, he's uh, got some great ideas for uh, Father's Day coming up. He's written some books about the Indians that don't talk about the glory years. We're talking about a couple of years in the f- early 40s when the uh, crybabies were there. Uh, we've got uh, the bad boys and bad times as well as uh, no money, no beer, no penance. Pretty intriguing stuff if you uh, love the Indians and uh, aren't familiar with these uh, moments, these eras. Check it out. He'll uh, also be uh, signing books at the following locations, as you see up there. June 7th from 6 until 8 p.m. at uh, the Main Street Books. That's in Mansfield. June 8th, uh, 1 to 3, Barnes & Noble's in Woodmere on Chagrin Boulevard. Then you've got June 15th from uh, 1 to 3. That's the... uh, Barnes and Nobles at uh, Menor. Then on the 16th, which is actually Father's Day, 1 to 3, he'll be in Columbus at the Book Loft. That's in German Village. You can check out scottlonger.com for more information. If you're a baseball fan or you've got a father or a grandfather who's a baseball fan, this is what you want to check out. Bad Boys and Bad Times, as well as the other book, No Money, No Beer, No Penance, from scottlonger.com. We'll come back in a moment with Jeff Shudell and... Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine with new, con- with new content posted each and every day. We'll have a Facebook question and its results a little bit later. Let's take a break exclusively on cleveland.com. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. 
There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery, partners in education, where stars shine. I think we've we got a base for what we're doing, and that's what we tried to get. Um, there's still some things to work out. There's still some timing details to work out. Um, but, you know, this has been a long process for these guys. As a new head coach, you get an extra week and an extra mini count, which in reality turns into two weeks. So it's been – I've been most impressed with how these guys have kept their head down and just worked because it does get uh, – redundant after a while you know because you're going back and making sure that uh you you're getting done what you wanted to get done which is having a base for the offense uh the base for the defense and a base for special teams because there's no game planning so the excitement kind of wears off um so these guys have been doing a good job of pushing through and uh and continuing to get uh get ready for training camp and essentially all we want to do is prepare everybody to compete in training camp. The identity of the team, I hope, fall, falls in line of what I want to see out of our team. And I want to be the most physical team on the field. All right. I want to play great defense. I want to move the ball. And I want to be great in special teams. All right. So that kind of sums it up. Um, now, in, in, in saying all that, these guys have to decide what they want their identity to be. I know what we're going to push and press for. And the identity is going to be of knowing what to do, knowing when to do it, knowing how to do it. And, and everything we do, do it physically. Well, you talk about being impressed, Jeff, and I'm impressed in how quick he's picked up learning how to handle the media and his poise in the press conference. Here's a guy that my guess is, although the NFL has assistant coaches or coordinators, mandatory once a week uh, press conferences, hmm. I don't think he's ever been in one. And yet, in the last two months, I, I think he's picked it up pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Because the first half of the season last year, we didn't speak. I think we spoke to him one time. Right. And then it was just once a week for the last half of the year when he was offensive coordinator. Right. And I, I do remember a couple of his uh, comments, actually. And he was, he was pretty smooth even then. He talked. I, he said, we're going to run the wishbone on a, right. the Thursday, I think, before they played. I think it was the Falcons. And we all laughed. And he, and he cause, did. Because he was from, Al, you know, he played at Alabama. Right. So, um, and so, yeah, and so they did the wishbone. And uh, in the next Thursday, I said, I told you guys. <laughs> you weren't listening. <laughs> right. And um, so, I, yeah, he yeah, does. But you think of him from the deep south, and you figure uh, he, he, maybe he doesn't talk as fast as northerners do. But he's, he's picked up the pace pretty well. And uh, I, I think he's a, I really think he's a smart guy. I think he is. And when you're trying to transcribe him, if he wants that southern slowness, hey, that's right. fine. So, uh, whoopty hell. Right. Yeah, that was a, th there's got to be <laughs> that could be whoopty the crying, hell t-shirts. Yeah, that could be the uh, rallying cry. Uh, yeah, for so, that. Um, so, yeah, I'm impressed by the way he handles us. All right, us. so he talked about the identity of the team, and he, he um, said some pretty sharp things there. What the, what's the strength and, and weakness, and do you, if you have a weakness, do you try to solve that, or do you just go around that? What do you do? Well, you probably try to disguise it a little bit. Okay. And um, you know, I'm still not big on the linebackers on these on this team. And I'm I'm telling you, Les, I really, um, I think that it's fair to say there are question marks on the offensive line because. Um, well, you know who uh, three of them are. Right, and, but and, and, and yes, and and but. Uh, Left tackle, Greg Robinson, they only gave up uh, five sacks, but he had ten holding penalties in, in those eight games he had. Would you rather have a holding penalty or a sack? Well, sure, you'd rather have the holding penalty. but um, uh, And then uh, I think it was Freddie Kitchens who just told us last week that um, fewer than 20% of the time a team in a two-minute drive scores if there's a holding penalty. So Or, or a, a sack. Or a, a loss of yardage. Yeah, that and, was pretty um, interesting. Maybe, maybe actually, maybe he said a sack. And um, well, so, that's where so, analytics come right. in. Right, and um, so I think Greg Robinson has to, he has to really clean that part of it up. And um, the rest and we, of the line, they they shipped one out. Right, and I mean, I'm not saying you know that was a good trade, probably trading 
Kevin Zeitler, the right guard for Olivier Vernon. Right. Um, but, you know, you really gave up something to get something. And, you you um, hope. Pardon? You hope. Yes. Well, yes, you hope. You know, you gave up something. <laughs> and, That's um, very true. And so we'll see. But, you know, I'm going to give John Dorsey, he certainly knows a lot more about it than I do. Yeah. So I'm going to assume that he made the right move. All right. So you, you talked about the weaknesses. What about the strengths? Well, I think that defensive line, there's some depth, too, on, on that line. Um, so that's going to be a big plus. And I, I think they're, they're, when you look at where this team was at wide receiver just a couple years ago, mm-hmm. when, when Sashi Brown drafted four guys and only Rashard Higgins is probably still even in the NFL, um, to where they are now, with Higgins is still here, uh, Landry, Coleman. Beckham, um, they have some some Damon Ratley, a draft pick last year, Derek Willies, who I thought looked pretty good until he then, unfortunately for him, he was injured almost I don't know, like three days after being activated. Right. He hurt his collarbone in training camp. Um, so I think some good think he, and Antonio if I, Callaway. If, if I it. recall, he caught a pass and everybody said, who's that guy? Yeah. And, and, but he's a tall guy and, and uh, strong and a smart guy when we talked to him. So right. he could pick on it quick. And so you had a, a, Antonio Callaway to that mix. Um, again, I think yeah, the challenge of, is going to be keeping everybody happy. Yeah, not only keeping happy, though, but you also keep the defense on their toes, trying to spend extra time figuring out who to, who to – um, Concentrate on right, and that's exactly right. And so, um, and you could spread them out like that. You're gonna think about that. You have Beckham, Landry, Callaway, and we'll just say Higgins. Yeah, and, you know, and how receiver. about and how about Duke Johnson coming out of the backfield? Yeah, and uh, so yeah, you better. That's going to keep some defensive coordinators up at night. I would think. Well, last year. Well, the other side of that is last year they kind of snuck up on some teams. They're not going to sneak up on anybody now. No, that's for sure. They won't sneak up on anybody, and and that's fine. I mean, the the uh, Chiefs don't sneak up on people. No, they, and they score a lot of score. points. So two um, one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Jeff Shudell is with us. Email us uh, during the show at reallesslevine at uh, gmail dot com. Greedy Williams, uh, I just love the name. We're going to take a look at him. We'll get your comments yeah. on Greedy Williams, the defensive back. Northfield Park is your home for live excitement in uh, racing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as well as Saturday nights with a post time at 6 p.m. Open early every day for simulcast action from all over the world at noon. Weekly uh, Sunday contest, uh, handicapping, top prize $500 cash per week. Belmont Stakes and Battle of Lake Erie coming on Saturday, June 8th, all at Northfield Park where it's free admission, free parking every day. We'll come back in a moment with Jeff Shudell exclusively on Cleveland.com. When my dad started Nature Stone right here in Northeast Ohio, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems, unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and always affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of May and get up to half off. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory.
you get in and, you know, you get your, you get bombed on a couple of times. Like, like my first day, in, you know, this OTA, you know, it was, it was bad. I was just questioning myself, like, you know, am I fit for this? But, you know, as, as it get going, you know, you get comfortable and, you know, get your confidence back up on you, you know, and everything play out well. What was, was, was there a breakthrough where then you thought, okay, I can do this, I, I do belong here? Uh, yeah, you know, I ain't never give up. You know, I've just, you know, just stay focused, maintain, and, you know, just every day I want to get better. So, you know, if, if I mess up on something, I do it fast, you know, just challenging myself to do everything fast. And um, you know, just going to the film room, you know, putting it all together. Was that, was that questioning? I mean, that's human nature. But was that like you gave up a play, or was it? Was it? How, what, what happened? You uh, just you know, corner. You know, a guy catch a ball on you a couple of times. You know, it's kind of frustrating. You know, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of like I'm letting 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 my defense down. So you know, just fighting myself with that. And um, you know, um, like I said. You know, just coming in and fix it, and you know, try to try to be better the next day. So that's kind of how I took this OTA. Were they asking you to do stuff that you weren't used to? Because you did seem a little uncomfortable yeah. early in those. In those uh, you know, there was just a lot of it's a lot of change up, but um, no, none, none, none just wasn't uncomfortable. Everything was like understandable, and you know, I can, I just, I just need the reps at it, you know, and um, you know, once I got comfortable with it, you know, I can, I'm, I'm, I was able to dominate. I tell guys all the time that, um, especially that position, you're going to get beat some, but you got to play the next play. You st it's almost like a quarterback. You're going to throw an interception, but you got to play the next play just like the other one didn't exist. And that's why I want our whole team to approach things is the last play doesn't mean anything. It's back to the rear view mirror, right? It's smaller than the windshield. So let's look forward. Let's look to play the play that we're playing right now. That's the only thing that matters. The other one doesn't matter anymore. Uh, and Greedy did a good job of pushing through that in the spring or in the, well, the whole time here. He's done a good job of pushing through that, but that's what the NFL is about. You got to push through, you got to play the next play. And, uh, you know, you've got to have confidence. You got to have more confidence in yourself than anybody else around you has in you. Um, and, and Greedy's going to be fine. was Greedy Williams. You wouldn't pay attention to him, but no. the name Greedy Williams just flies off your tongue. Right? It really does. Yeah. And um, and also, he if you watch him close, there's a little Chris Rock in him. That's what people are saying. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's exactly what someone said at it the first time we talked to him. Right. He, and he joked that he tells people that Chris Rock is his father. <laughs> so, um, um, so, yeah, you know, when you look at the bronze corners, and there's another um, tip of the hat to... Uh, to John Dorsey, he spends a fourth pick on a cornerback last year in Denzel Ward, right? And he uh, uses his first pick this year on, on another do, cornerback. Do you, do you see them on the same, both starting, or do you see one beating the other one out? No, I, no, they would not. Uh, Denzel Ward will play left, right? And Greedy Williams will play the right. They, and well, I, I guess what I meant is, do you expect Greedy to be the starter? I think he will. Um, we'll see. Now, T.J. Carey. Um, another cornerback got was injured slightly today. We do not know um, it was his knee or his ankle. Okay. Um, and after practice, we asked Freddie Kitchens, but he had no answer on that. And then, which is typical because it's right after practice, and he doesn't really have a chance. And he doesn't yet know yet. To, right, doesn't know yet. So right. um, unless it's a major, in, if it's a major injury, right. well, with Charles Bentley, they know. Right. Right. And uh, so the fact that he didn't know is probably encouraging. Because if it had been disastrous, just like right. with Charles Bentley, he would have known. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You uh, talked about the uh, wide receiver, uh, wide receiving core, Antonio Callaway, one of those guys, and we'll check in with him when we get back. You also can check us out at the voicemail of Truth and Reason. If you can't catch us when we're on uh, 6 to 7 p.m. live Eastern time and you want to get a comment in, you can do that the other 23 hours by calling that number, 216-200-6650. Leave the message, try to keep it as short as possible, and we will respond to it on the air. And Jeff, if we get one tonight, you and I can just yell at that person as if it's an actual live, oh, live good. person I like call. It. All right, sounds good. Like because they can't fun. argue back with you. Yeah, I like that. We'll come back, we're halfway through with Jeff Shudell. We'll come on back in a moment, exclusively on cleveland.com.
it takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at 440-449-HEAT. Yeah, I think everybody's competitive. You know, I think every year guys are trying to make the roster. Guys are going to try and show out. But we never a guy like Odell and Jarvis and Hunt and Chubb and Duke, um, Callaway, Higgs. You know, all those guys are are trying to make big plays, and they see Odell make a play. I'm sure in the back of their mind they're like, oh, I can do that too, you know. But in the end of the day, they're trying to be the best version of themselves, and if it pushes each other to kind of improve to be, you know, one of the top three or four guys that's going to get significant playing time, then I'm all for it, you know. I was thinking about the other day, and I'm like, you throw Chubb out there, you throw Hunt out there, they both get tired, you put Duke or Hilliard in. I mean, you're not really getting too much fall off. These guys are going to be ready to go, and it's our job to, to give them room on the O-line to, to really make some plays. Have you seen any growth in Callaway? He seems to, you know, he's got some lofty goals, even though there's a lot of talent. There. Oh, yeah, he's, he's taking a huge step. Um, he seems focused on football. You know, I think when he first got here, there was a lot going on. He was drafted and, mm -hmm. and some stuff, but he seems real focused on football. And uh, and I think he's seen, like, the mix of things he can be. You know, he had some big plays for us last year, some big, big, uh, long plays. And I think with Todd coming over um, from Tampa Bay, he sees, you know, a lot of what Deshaun Jackson did. Mm -hmm over there and hopefully he can be that that point you always need that deep threat you know Odell's a great receiver Jarvis is a great receiver and Odell can do anything on a football field but but you also want that guy that can take the roof off the defense and, and really open it up for the tight ends and everybody else I think Antonio's had a great spring I think everybody would agree right he's he's been really really good and I'm really excited about Antonio coming back um, you know from a knowledge standpoint from knowing what to do when to do it uh, and then actually doing it uh, he's done very well. He's given himself some lofty goals. Do you like that out of a guy who oh, was a star-studded receiver room? Um, yeah, I do. I like that. I like setting the expectations high for ourselves, not letting you guys do it, but let's do it. Antonio Callaway is a rookie season 2018, 43 receptions, 586 yards. 13 and a half yards uh, per reception and five touchdowns. It's a pretty good year for a rookie, right? Yeah, Who was unpolished coming in? Right, and uh, especially, you know, like I said, rookie, and he went through that coaching change right. like everybody did, of course. So, you know, the first uh, two and a half games, he didn't have Baker Mayfield as his uh, starter. Tyrod Taylor was at that time. So um, there was a lot of adjusting. And he, well, he learned what the NFL is like because it's always constant change. You had Joel Petonio before. One of the impressive numbers on, on that, it's not even a number or a stat, but the fact that there were several games that Baker Mayfield didn't even get dirty. Right. And so somebody was doing something yeah. right on the line. You're, you're right about that. And, uh, and Mayfield moves around too. And we ask offensive linemen who's easier to block for, a pocket guy or one right. who moves. And the pocket quarterback is easier to block for, but if the guy could escape like uh, Mayfield can, just then gives you more time. He gives you more time. Yeah. So, but the linemen have to know which way he's going. They right. can't, and can't they block don't always, the guy into yeah, him. Yeah, and right. And they don't. I'm not sure how they could always know where he is right. when they're blocking the guy. In he's front looking of him. for any opening he can right, find. Right. Right. So, his skin. Um, so that is a again, again. I don't want to keep. Repeating myself, but still, that I mean, you're really set with Treader, you're set with Betonio, and I'd say you're probably set with Chris Hubbard on the right side, but um, but we're gonna see how things go when the pads come on with the other two. All right, is it reasonable to assume that because of Beckham, because of uh, Jarvis Landry, that if Callaway gets in there in a three-man set or or not? that they're not going to be doubling him, they're going to be doubling the other guys. He could sneak in and have a, statistically have a really nice year. Right, he could, and, and he would benefit from uh, double-teaming Landry or, or Beckham. And last year, when you really break it down, um, I think some of Anton Antonio Callaway's success came from when uh, Landry was being double-teamed. Right. And um, 
So you're right. They can't. You yeah, can't double they team have to everybody. Account, they can double team uh, him, but then Beckham looms. Right, and so not too far you away. know they're going to try to double team Beckham, and uh, and that's going to leave other people free. I think Jarvis Landry will have a better year. I mean, he, I mean, he caught 77 passes last right. year, so it wasn't like As he had the a bad guy. season, right? And so I think he'll benefit too from uh, from Beckham. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. Obviously, this is the best receiving core the Browns have had since they came back in '99. Oh, you know, uh, that, that, not I even mean, close. Right. I mean, this is like the Reggie Langhorn Webster Slaughter yeah. days. Well, now wait a minute. So, if it's the best wide receiving core and best quarterback since coming back in '99, and maybe the best running backs, right? Yeah, it, it is. Other than the the line is not the best, I don't think. I'm sure there've been some pretty good lines in between. But if you add the good ones up, you're you're looking at pretty a lot, a lot of talented people on this squad. Right, and and, uh, and Freddie Kitchens keeps saying because we do ask about the offense probably eighty percent of the time, right. if not more. Um, but the defense, I think the secondary is going to be is going to be good. I think those safety positions that were a little unsettled, I think that's going to be a little bit better. A little bit better, yes. yes. I was talking to somebody today. And we're talking about Odell Beckham, and he says, well, he may be trouble or in the locker room or he may cause he's a diva, and which we all agree. But there's nothing illegal. It's nothing with the, with the law. It's not with, you know, he may be a problem. Whatever, whatever he's trying to get and whatever he's trying to do with his teammates, that's one thing. But he, he doesn't get in trouble. You're not going to have to worry about the police calling him at three and calling the, the team at 3 in the morning. You, and you know who are two other receivers not the, who play with the Browns? But um, you could might consider it a diva, but are exactly what you just said, Terrell Owens. Do you remember him ever getting arrested? Yeah, no. Chad Johnson. I, I don't know that I wanted them on a the team I'm rooting for, but I, I, well, that's a silly question. With their production, I would. But, but you, you, you just thought because of the image of what they did on the field, you assume it carried over off the field, and it didn't with those guys. No, I mean, Chad Johnson is, is a pretty good guy in that community. And, um, and I'm not sure about Terrell Owens, so I'm not saying he isn't. Right. But um, I just don't know. Right. And um, but those two guys were were clowns. I mean, they would um, pick a cell phone up off from under the pad, and which is pretty funny. But by it was the way. Pretty, yeah. And um, so, but they were. How did nobody see him setting that up before the game? I know. And uh, but still, you think about those guys. You'd want them on your team. Yeah, if, you would. If you were a you fan. Would. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to spell Ocho Cinco, but right. I, I like these guys on the team. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Email us, email us during the show, reallesslevine at gmail.com. Jeff Shudel is with us. Uh, you've also, you cover everybody for the News Herald, including the Cleveland Indians. I thought that's a huge win last night if they have any intention of trying to sneak back in, maybe play better while Minnesota plays worse, but that was a big game. Now Trevor Bauer gets to go for three in a row tonight. It really was a big game last night because um, the, the Twins were up 11 and a half when they right. came in, and the Indians were losing that game five to two, five maybe, to one, five to one. one. And had they lost, and even if they would win tonight, now you're still ten and a half back. Right. But uh, you could cut it to eight and a half, and not only cut it to eight and a half less, but uh, Put some doubt into the yeah, twins' mind. You can tell Minnesota don't don't celebrate the the uh, title yet. Right. You, until you knock down the Indians, they're still the the right. the, uh, the ex champs, the, right. the reigning champs. And you, and uh, and soon Clevenger will be back. Right. Eventually, um, Kluber will be back from that arm. I'm not sure. No one knows when that will be yet. Right. Um, and there's of course still the Carrasco more, thing is horrible. It is terrible. So those who don't know. Carlos Carrasco has some blood disorder, right? And Which we don't know what it is yet. No, Indians are saying they expect him back at some time this season. They're not going to say on June fourth he's done for the right. year, um, June fifth. But um, that that could be that could be bad. But the Indians really do have depth in that starting rotation. I, I think they have more depth than any team in baseball. Right. I mean, you think about. We're saying, well, Kluber hasn't pitched well. He didn't pitch great, let's admit. Right. Um, but I, I feel good for uh, about the Indians' chances with Bauer closing out this series. And it looks like tonight. some of these guys starting to hit a little bit, right. including Ramirez. Yeah, and um, Zach Plezak, who's made yeah. two starts, 
Boy, he played. He Beautiful. pitches with confidence. Absolutely. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. Indians looking to sweep the Twins. We'll talk about that. Sokolowski's University. And Jeff, I was there this afternoon. Mm. I now have been there more than uh, more consecutive days than Joe DiMaggio or Cal Ripken on Thursdays. There's a. A record book in Cooperstown. How often do you go to Sokolowski's? Every Thursday for the last 24 years, I think, is the answer. You've probably been there more than some of the people who work there. Yeah, exactly. Sokolowski's University and one of the uh, great winners of the James Beard Foundation Award a couple of years ago, one of five in the country that get it. They're the only ones who, uh, from Cleveland who have ever gotten the James Beard Foundation Award and well, well, well deserved. Cleveland's oldest family owned and operated restaurant established back in 1923. First uh, exit out of downtown Cleveland. That's where you're going to find it, at the uh, Abbey Avenue exit, Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University Inn. Jeff Shadell and I return in a moment with uh, this date in sports history and this date in Les Levine history. Oh. We can't wait for that. We'll be back in a moment exclusively on Cleveland.com. The concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of May and get up to half off. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Let's take a look at uh, this date in uh, sports history, June 6, 1992. Eddie Murray, then of the Orioles, for later on with the Indians, passed Mickey Mantle to become the all-time switch-hitting uh, RBI leader with 1,510 wow. RBIs. That's pretty impressive. That's right? a good stat. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Now, let's take a look at this date in Les Levine history. 1964, Les thinks about running for class president when the fall would come around. His slogan would be, the more you vote, the less you'll get. <laughs> Let's take a look at this week in review as we do on Thursday nights. Way back in 1970, Les tells his Sandlot coach that someday there might be a designated hitter because Major League uh, players can hit, but there certainly won't be a designated bunter. They can't bunt, Jeff. 1999, for years, Gus, the heavy set softball umpire, that's me on the bottom right, Jeff. He, he told everybody that he once played for the San Diego Chargers in the early 70s. What he didn't count on was the invention of the internet so that the players had a chance to check that lie out. <laughs> then we go to uh, 1960. Les and his classmates go on a hayride to celebrate the end of the school year. Whenever he went to get a seat, every girl yelled, hey. That's why it was named the hayride. Man, you are very clever. I like those. I don't know how you come up with those well, show after show. Uh, we, well, we come up with 250 a year, and then we repeat a few of them. Uh, the Minnesota Twins entering tonight's uh, action against the Indians at Progressive Field. They've not lost three games in a row. How about that? They've not been swept in a series. That could happen tonight. And they will, for wow. sure, no matter what happens, they will lose their first series of the year since, uh, ninth, since uh, May 3rd through the 5th against the New York Yankees. Wow, that's, that last one is really impressive. It's pretty me. hard to do yeah. in, in the two months. Lindor has been sensational the last five games. He's been sensational all year, but the last five games in particular, let's take a look at what he's done. 10 for 19, 526 batting average, four homers, five RBIs, and six runs scored. You four know, we figured out. And five RBIs kind of tells you no one's getting on. Yeah, right. 
Although uh, he's, he leads off, so a couple of I did some checking. How many more at-bats do you think a leadoff batter has than the second batter hmm. in, in, the, in a season? Let's say he batted leadoff okay. and, and uh, Ramirez batted second, including walks and everything else. How many, how many extra at-bats do you think the leadoff batter I, has? I'll say 40. 18. 18 oh, to really? 19. Wow. Depending on the team. And uh, so That's the a good and and so if you go from lead, in other words, if you wanted to move Lindor from first to third, that would be 36 more at bats as as a leadoff man because it's it's mm -hmm. 18 each, and so you want it, with with this lineup or this offense, you want Lindor up as often as you can. Have. Right. Yes. Maybe on some teams you wouldn't want him leading off. You might want him third, but on this team, if you get 36 more at bats, you, you sure you got to do it. Mm, that's a good number. Yeah, it is. How'd, that, uh, how'd you find that? That's a oh, the, the same internet that that uh, gave up on uh, Gus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked somebody who can figure out stuff like that. I'll tell you, you what. You think I could do that? I'll tell you what. Uh, there's there is stuff, analytics and baseball that is so far beyond us old guys. <laughs> it's not only behind the old guys. I can't even figure out why it's a valid point to make. You know, if you tell me launch angle and how fast the ball gets out, I don't care if it's a home run. Do I care how fast it got out? And, and you know what? I think we talked about this before. Now these uh, baseball gurus kind of place a low emphasis on RBIs. Right. And wins for pitchers. Okay. Well, well somewhere in the standings, I know that wins count and runs indirectly count. So. Or you wouldn't be there. Are they? Yes. I mean... Well, when, he, if you lose 2 nothing, I yeah. think it's pretty easy to figure out, hmm, those are RBIs. Maybe I, they are important. <laughs> I, here's what I don't get. You, you have, you know, the way these guys shift in the infield and all that stuff. And if somebody checks, let's say a left-handed batter, checks his, and everybody's on the right side, he checks his swing and bloops one over the shortstop position, it's a hit. Well, that's, that's a phony hit. I mean, why would that show up on, on analytics? Because that doesn't tell you you should yeah, play him right. over to the left or to the right or right, up the yeah. middle. So, I mean, it doesn't tell you how hard the ground ball was if it goes up the middle. It doesn't tell you. It, to me, it doesn't help you. What do you think of this shift? Do you think the shift should be banned? No, or why, why would you ban it? I don't think it should I would be. mandatorily, I would take all of spring training and s tell people to lay down a bunt, learn how to bunt the ball, m move them over. They're going to, until you show them that you can beat them the other way, they're going to continue to do that right, and take that, your weapon away. That's the way to beat the shift is to uh, is to stop the shift is to is to beat. And some of the Indians, I think, are trying to do. I think that's. I think they think it's a sign of a weakness if they go the other way and just hit a ground ball or a bunt. But I would show it to them. Oh, if for no other reason, you get late in the game and you've shown them you can bunt like that, they're going to move over and it opens up where where you normally hit the ball. I know that Terry Francona is against. Banning the bunt. I'm yeah, he, banning yeah, the Yeah, he likes uh, it. He says beat it. Say. He says beat it. Yeah, Do you right. also notice that he hates the bunt, but he's been bunting a lot lately because his team doesn't hit. And you know what? I mean, hey, if you get the whole left side, the whole third base side, even a the, bad bunt is good. Yeah, and right. uh, and why not? And you're right. If you you should be able to do that. All right. We asked uh, our Facebook question people. Who besides Lindor is the one player you would vote for in this year's uh, MLB All-Star Game, which will be held at Progressive Field? Carl Brunstetter says uh, Carlos Santana. Glenn Berger, Brad Hand, he's having an outstanding season. Gregory Mees, no doubt Brad Hand, the best save guy we've had in years. Rick Mace is Brad Hand, if, not, uh, if I'm not mistaken. He's 14 for 14. I think it's better than that now. I think it's 17 for 17. Yeah, I'm not sure the number, but I know he's really, really been good. He's the only shiny, other shining light besides Lindor. Then Ed Arlen, new uh, new voter, says I wouldn't even uh, wouldn't even have Lindor as an All Star this year. Yes, you would. The game's in Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, why you, you? You almost have to. I mean, you just show those numbers. I mean, he's guy was hurt for the first month. R right, and, and you know still what? maybe. There's there's um. There's a rumor going around that the Indians are shopping Brad Hand. I well, if you do that, then you're giving up on yeah, the season. Yeah, if so, it's because you could get a, get a lot for him. But I, I wouldn't do. I'm not ready to give up the season yet. No. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. I got a feeling we've got some how come quickies coming our way uh, for the next segment. In the meantime, Northfield Park, your home for live and simulcast racing. 
And it's open early every day for simulcast action. It's open at noon for uh, action from all over the world. The weekly Sunday uh, handicapping contest with a grand prize of uh, $500 each week. Lady Lux Clubhouse open every Saturday with a buffet for just $15.95. Free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. You want to watch the Belmont Stakes, you can do that. Then the live Battle of Lake Erie. That's uh, Saturday, June 8th at Northfield Park. 216-575-0403. Each week, the Ohio Lottery's Partners in Education program recognizes students who are role models from across the state of Ohio. This week, we head to East Palestino High School to meet Sam Early. Sam excels in the performance arts and in the classroom as well. The Ohio Lottery proud to salute Sam Early, this week's shining star. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Sam Early was born to perform. Happy again. Being able to perform for other people, just being able to show off my talent a little bit, being able to make people watch you and be able to smile or laugh or cry or anything like that, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it takes a lot of, a lot of time, but I always have fun doing it. Even though he's a junior at East Palestine High School, Early has already been cast in seven musicals in the Youngstown area and Western Pennsylvania. Just getting to work with a lot of like amazing, like talented people, some more experienced people, getting to learn from them, I think it's a lot of fun to do that. Sam is one of the most conscientious actors we have. He really studies his lines. He's one of the first people to be prepared for a rehearsal. Um, He'll know everyone else's lines, so he can help them too. It's really fun to watch that happen. As far as school goes, Sam is a member of the high school choir. I think confidence is one of the biggest factors. He become more confident in himself as a singer and as, as a musician, and that and that kind of gives him extra skills on top of his natural ability. That confidence alone is enough to to drive him forward. And he excels in the classroom too. He's always very kind to everybody. Um, always very helpful. Um, always very gracious about telling me about my uh, typos that I put. Um, he's got a good eye for, for spelling and uh, grammar and always kindly points those out to me, so I do appreciate that. It's very early for Sam Early to decide what he wants to do in life, but for all of the things he's already accomplished, this shining star has a lot of options to choose from. That's why I thought about politics for a little bit, because, you know, I can... Like, I'll try to, like, make speeches, and I can try to speak out towards people, and I'm more confident in myself from that. Singing, singing in the rain. Well, if you know of a student deserving of recognition, visit OhioLottery.com. Go to uh, the About section. Find the tab that is marked Supporting Education, then nominate him or her as an academic all-star. And uh, he or she could wind up as one of our shining stars from the Ohio Lottery. Jeff Shudell is with us. Let's check out birthdays for today. Bill Dickey, Hall of Fame catcher. Bobby Mitchell seen on the left with the great uh, Jim Brown in that backfield. Bud Harrelson, Cliff Notes, 1947. Bjorn, uh, that's the law, uh, Bjorn Borg uh, played for the, the Cleveland Nets, the indoor uh, tennis team. And DeAndre Hopkins, all born on the 6th of June, which is D-Day. I covered the Nets, that was a lot of fun. Did you really? Actually. Yeah. Martina? Yeah, that yeah. was fun. All right, here's a how come quickie. How come when there was an accident on Route 271 involving a truck carrying wigs to a beauty supply store, police were called to uh, comb the area? <laughs> Is that okay? That was all right. That was a good one. All right, well, let's see if these people can top me, top that. <clears throat> Cleveland Bill says, <laughs> how come there's no polka song called Who Stole the Filet Mignon? You know, Who Stole the Kishka? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> I don't have an answer for that, which automatically makes it a good how come quickie. Cleveland Bill comes in and says, how come Manute Bowl and Muggsy Bogues were my favorite players? I like them, and that's the long and the short of it. <laughs> that's, a no -will. that's a good one, though. Uh, that's a good one. Yesterday on radio, we talked to Taki Taki, and then today we talked about Bowl Bowl, the, the uh, basketball player. Neither of them are from Walla Walla, Washington. <laughs> All right, uh, this one, I, got, I, I must admit, this is from uh, Mitch. And he sent me three, and I don't get one of them at all. But I like this one. How come with all this rain they changed their name to the Wetter Channel? That's all right. That's all right. Mr. Gullible, how come sign language is pretty handy? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. 
How come I want to say to the mathematicians who come up with the idea of zero, thanks for nothing? <laughs> All right, this is who you vote on. You vote on uh, John Patrick, who sends in two daily double. And you vote, and it's like a 9.1 or 8.7. Right, so ready. put the two together, divide by two. How come I was all up all night trying to remember if I had insomnia or amnesia? <laughs> That's one. How come as a kid I was really good at tiddlywinks until I broke my tiddly? Uh, I like the first one a lot better. Well, but you right. put the two I, together. I, I'm going to give it a 6.4. 6.4 is the lowest ever given by a guest oh. on this show. Oh, well, I'm sorry. But mine is, why isn't the... Uh, how come? How come the uh, roof of your mouth isn't the ceiling since it's on the inside? I don't know. <laughs> Which makes it a good quickie. All right. Let's go to BP, who's standing by or sitting by or driving by in Pepper Pike. Hello, BP. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing good. okay, how BP. You? How are you? Doing well. I uh, just wanted to call real quick about that incident with the MB. A fan or the uh, part owner or whatever he is, investor of the he's Golden an State investor Warriors, of the... and the way he interacted with Kyle Lowry. Do you think yeah, and he was worth he's worth blown or what? He's worth two point uh, two point three billion dollars. No, it's not overblown. You can't whether it's a fan or an investor, you can't go grabbing a player and shove him. You know that. Yeah, and what I I'm mean, thinking did, is, do you think it's overblown? Like, not now that I found out some of the details and I saw the highlights, it just yeah. seem odd. But um, I'm wondering. I hope. They don't do in basketball what they've done in baseball where, like, they put up that whole – I don't like what they've done down at Progressive Field where they put up the shield where you can't – you know, to me, you can't feel uh, – I don't know, you can't catch foul balls as well. And uh, I hope they don't do that in the NBA where they start, like, shielding the fans from the Well, wait a minute. Court. Hold on a minute. Have you ever sat in those seats at Progressive Field? Yes. You don't and really – I don't, like, I don't well, like that new uh, shield where you basically can't get any foul balls anymore. Well, do you like, do you like, do you like four-year-old girls in Houston getting hit by a foul ball? I'm sorry? Do you like hmm. four-year-old girls in Houston well, get hit by a foul ball as she did last they, week? You know, they, maybe they shouldn't come to the game or they, oh, their parents should geez. bring a baseball mitt. Come on. I mean, oh, they, they, you know, they did it. Same thing in hockey. The poor girl from from uh, gets killed yeah. in Columbus, and they put that netting up behind, right. the, uh, behind the goals. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even you – know, you almost, like, see through it. Hey, a, BP. How old were you mm -hmm. when you started watching ba going to baseball games? No, I went to baseball games as a, as a five-year-old. I remember going when I think Mudcat Grant still pitched yeah. for the Indians. That's how far back I All go. Right, so I, you go that I'll far back, and you're saying four-year-olds shouldn't go to games. Come on. You can't well, have it they, both ways. they got to be aware. You know, I would bring oh, a baseball yeah. glove. Okay, and, hold on know? one second. Excuse me, honey. Be aware a 120-mile-an-hour <laughs> foul ball is coming your way. Yeah. Try to catch it with the left hand this time. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Well, to be honest with you, a lot, of, a lot of everybody's looking at their phone nowadays. Whenever I go to an Indians game or yeah. a Cavs game, everybody's looking at their phone, to be I'll honest. I'll give you so, that. Well, uh, yeah, that, that's true, and that's a, a, another issue for another day. But you can't tell a 4-year-old girl to be careful and watch every – now, it's 2-2 well, no, count. You be careful. The parent has to be responsible, to be honest. Well, so. then sit – you know, next time sit beyond the netting. Uh, no, no, I prefer to be near the action, to be honest. But. Well, then then it, it goes with the territory, I guess. BP, I yeah. normally agree with you a thousand percent, but I think you're doing this on purpose. You're making it up. No, no, I really, I just don't. I, of course, the fans need to show restraint at, at all these venues, even at the Brown, you know, whenever. I, but, like, think about I, when I, guys okay. jump into the dog pound or when they jump into yeah. Lambeau Field. You know, usually the fans, 99% of the time, they use good judgment. I wonder if this guy was drinking last night or... I don't you know, know but, if knows, he, but, but he's a part. If he's an investor in the team, he's got to be. Ta that has to be taken away from him. You know, I give that part of the problem to Drake, that guy, that entertainer. Yeah. That guy, I think he's a singer or something. Yeah. But um, he's part of the problem. For yeah. So hey, if he could do it, I mean, I don't have any. BP, of you're a basketball albums. historian. Do you remember Robin Ficker? Yeah. Yeah, I heard you mentioning him earlier today on the fan. Yeah, he's a Washington Bullets fan or a, a Wizards fan yeah. now. And he was the probably the greatest heckler of all time. Well, that I that felt, was I felt somewhat he was funny. Out of line. I remember seeing highlights yeah. of him. He would stand up and berate the visiting team, and I felt yeah. he was out of line. He was out of line. But you make a point. I guess if you have a four-year-old, maybe sit further back. I guess, but you can't tell him not to bring him to the game. It's how you fell in love with the game at the age of five, and so did I. To tell you the truth, have you sat in the lower level of uh, Jay, uh, Progressive Field, and you know, like? 
like Jose Ramirez, if he would catch a line drive, he'd run the ball and he'd throw it to the fans. Now he came and flip a ball to the fans. By I'd rather have netting. that than having a four-year-old girl get hit by a foul yeah. ball. All right, I got to okay. go. Nothing personal. Got to go. You got it. I can't believe he said don't take the kid to the game. I mean, and, and that netting, I mean, yeah, maybe it does. You don't notice it. No. And, you, you know, if, you, if it – Robs you of a chance to get a foul ball. You're right. I would much go, have go my go to the grand... team shop and buy a foul ball, buy yeah. a, a baseball. I'm much have my granddaughter safe than uh, Absolutely. worry about that. Thanks to Jeff Shudell, he gets a break here on the football end of it. But you'll be loaded up with the Indians and and uh, hopefully the Cavaliers. Well, the NBA the draft, draft the... two weeks from tonight. All right, great job by Jeff. He'll join us again at a future date. That'll do it for us. We'll see you. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.